Hi everyone, in this video we'll be covering the develop module and the name might have put you off, but there's a reason behind it and we'll cover what the develop module is in this video. All right, so the develop module. In the past, but even today, uh, when we used film as a primary subject, many people still use film, we had to physically take the film, go somewhere like a dark room, and use chemicals to actually create photography from our film in a dark room and develop it, hence the name develop. Uh, since that time, uh, digital cameras have you know, boomed and that's usually what most people use. And the advantage with digital cameras is that we usually photograph in so-called raw format, which allows you to really edit the image further. Uh, but in order to actually see, view, edit, change, and even uh, change that format to say a JPEG, we need some sort of software. And the advantage to having that sort of software is that we can edit the picture, change it to that JPEG so that we can actually view it on other devices such as your smartphone, um, a tablet, on the internet, etc. And the advantage of the raw file format or digital and using these programs is that you can manipulate and edit your photo much further than you could in say the past using just film, analog and uh, doing some tricks which you can do in the darkroom but using digital photography we have just a much more a breadth of editing and what we can do to physically change how that photograph looks. And that's the gist of what the develop module can do, what you should use it for. So let's jump in and see some of the basic things you can utilize to really play around with your photography. Let's go. All right, welcome to the develop module. And as you've noticed, there's a lot here. So let's take it a bit by bit. You can quickly and easily enhance your photographs here. And I'll show you how to do that now using this example and explain what function serves what purpose. Okay, all the functions you see here in the right side panel are arranged in the same order in which you should proceed when editing. If you wanna switch that order around and edit colors, say, first, and then exposure, white balance, etc., it's going to usually throw off your colors. And you'll have to start all over again, which you probably don't want to do because that's a waste of time. So the first piece of advice I'd like to give all of you is follow this order that we have here in the UI because it's going to make everything much easier and the end product a much more high quality uh, product in the end. So again, follow that order you see in the right side panel. It's a good idea to start by cropping and straightening out the photo overall, just to improve the overall composition. Um, but the example I have just in this situation has a pretty clear central composition, so there's no real need to make any major changes in this situation. Maybe we could choose to align the horizon, say if it's just a bit crooked, and that's what this function is for. Uh, drag the line along the horizon, and boom, it's straight. Uh, we can also align the horizon using the special perspective function, which is found right here. And we can use it not only to straighten the horizon, but to also straighten out buildings and other vertical lines which might appear in our photography. So here's a photo just to demonstrate what I mean. Notice that the horizon looks fine and it's not tilted, but this building is completely crooked and bent out of shape. So if we straighten it by aligning the horizon, the building will be straight, but then the rest of the photo is going to be crooked. So let's click on perspective. And the easiest option to choose here is the smart. And poof. Both the building and the horizon are straight and we're done. If we go back, notice the difference. And we can go back using the keyboard shortcut we're all used to, which is uh, Control Z. Okay, moving on. Let's go back to the original image and demonstrate the develop module's other features. In terms of adjustments, we can choose to adjust the exposure and we can adjust contrast and manipulate the highlights right here. Obviously this photo is in raw format, but we can edit other image formats such as JPEG. However, with a raw, which we recommend you photograph in raw, you have access to a lot more fundamental changes without any loss of image quality. And it's worth mentioning that every raw file has a lot more data than any J JPEG file. So you're really able 
to uh, pull out much more from that photo. Say if you overexpose something, you can really uh, bring that down, the exposure down to make the photo look good. If you try to do the same thing in JPEG, the information's not there and it's going to look blown out, pixelized, it's just not gonna look as good. And it's also worth mentioning that all the adjustments we're making are non-destructive, which means that the original image remains untouched. The adjustments are made to a tiny little supplementary file in ZPS format. And the benefit here is that this allows us to return at any time to our adjustments that are in progress and edit them further, change anything that we feel like maybe even later on just doesn't feel right. That's the advantage of using non-destructive uh, editing. When we do our final export, the adjustments are etched into the photo, but the work in process version remains. And that is unless we actually choose to permanently delete it. So you might be thinking, can, you know, can we work destructively? Yes, we can. We can work destructively and save changes to the original, but we're going to lose the option to undo the adjustments we did and to make changes at any time. And these settings can be changed, but our pro tip is to leave it as it is. Work in the non-destructive manner. I think that's going to help you down the road. And the option to make changes directly to your original photograph with no option to undo that is right here. But we leave that decision to you. All right, notice the image is changing right now. No, your monitor isn't broken, I'm doing it. And it's happening because I'm alternating between the original and edited photo by using the backslash key. And I think this is a really great tool that you can use um, if you're doing lots of edits and you just forgot what the photo looked like when you started. This is a really simple way of seeing the before and after so that you don't get lost uh, in the editing rabbit hole. All right, on we go to the tone curve. We covered what curves are for and some tips for using them. That's all in another video, so I suggest checking that out. Now, color shift, it's also a very popular function. We, of course, use it to change specific colors. For example, like this red in the photo, which is actually also uh, contained in uh, many skin tones. So when we move it, we can see how the skin tone changes, or we can move uh, blue, and for example, if we don't like how the camera renders the lake colors here, we can change those. And not only can we adjust hue, but also saturation. And if we're not sure which slider to drag to affect that particular color, we can just use the eyedropper tool here, click on the specific area we want to change. Zoner is already going to recognize what color that is, and we just have to move it back and forth or to the area we want to get the color we want. Super simple. Next, I wanna make an important point because we might want to adjust a certain color, but that exact same color, for example, a reddish orange that could also be found in certain skin tones can change. So if we want to change those colors using the method that we already outlined just a second ago, the skin tones that are close to those reddish orange colors are going to change too, which presents a problem but we can easily bypass this issue by using local adjustments. For instance, taking the filter brush right here, and we can use it to paint exactly what we want to change. And now I'm only going to be changing a particular object's color and not a potential skin tone, for example. And as you can see, the local adjustments are a big strong point of the develop module and they make working with color shift much, much easier. Next, we got split toning, and that's a little bit different than the color shift as we're not changing the existing colors, but rather adding colors to the photo. And add new colors either to the shadows or to the highlights for the entire photo. Essentially, mix the colors around just to get your own signature style. And we've recorded several videos about color shift in more detail, so feel free to check those out on our YouTube channel. Okay, next up is shift primary colors. In a nutshell, if you don't like the way your camera renders red, green, or blue, you can shift these colors however you want. Every camera has its own color science, and in short, if we don't like how our camera renders, for example, red, then we can shift it to more of a, say, yellow, for example, and this new shade of red is now going to show up on the entire photo. 
There are other things to look out for, such as add grain and other functions. And now that we're familiar with the main functions, it's important to mention that we can use all the adjustments used in our photo to create our own preset. We can then save the preset and apply it to other photos. Naturally, the preset is going to look best on the photos that are similar to the one we're editing right now. Because if I were to use the same preset, say for a daytime photo, uh, and try to apply it to a photo taken during the night, it's not gonna make sense. It's probably not gonna look very good. And presets are awesome because they, of course, save us time. And uh, if we're editing, say, an event where we're going to be using very similar edits, that preset can save us a lot of time. And it's also a good way to sort of work towards creating that um, aesthetic, your own personal aesthetic, if you will. Okay, here we also have the option to choose from one of our installed presets. And uh, if we want more, we can download a lot more from the Zonar Photo Studio X website for free. All right, let's move on to another important piece of information. Uh, something that we like to cover is when we look at a film strip here, uh, notice that some of the images are labeled like fractions, like you know half or two two and so on. Uh, don't worry, this isn't mathematics, but something called variants. And variants are great for we want to create multiple versions and we just can't decide on one type of edit we did, or we create several of them and then decide we want to pick one of them later. It's just nice to have more options. And that's what variants are good for. Now create variants by clicking on this button or by right clicking the photo and selecting create variant. Now it's not an exact copy, but just a variant of the original, uh, which means that we're not taking the same information and duplicating it, but rather uh, we make a very small file of the original, and so that barely takes up any space on your hard drive. Once we're happy with the adjustments we've made and we want to copy them over to another photo, we've got several options. Select the photo and click Copy, and then click the photo you want to edit in the same way and click Paste. That's a very primitive or basic method for copying adjustments from one photo to another, but our brilliant developers have used their brains and taken these batch edits much further. And they've given us many more options for creating batch edits. If we press Shift and then the option to apply to all files, this adjustment is applied to all the photos in the current folder. If we press Control and the option apply to the following files is enabled, and if we press Alt, the option to paste from previous file is enabled. This means the edits we did last are applied. And what's all this good for? Well, it saves time, and time, as we know, is money. Then when we're happy with your photo editing and we want to publish it to, say, the internet, then we can export it. And the simplest thing to do is use one of the presets that are found at the top of the dialog window here Export is a great tool, and we have many, many options to choose from there. We covered export, though, in another video in a lot more detail, so please check that out if you're interested. Even if you're not interested, I'm glad that you went through this video with us. I hope you learned something and that it mapped out some of those base functions of the develop module so that you can start editing your pictures in full. I hope to see you in the next video. Give us a thumbs up, click on subscribe as it helps us uh, push these tutorials out to more people such as yourselves. And until the next video, take care. I'll see you later.